Hi, my name is Dan DiCapria. I am a senior data scientist at the Artificial Intelligence Division. Today we'll be talking about software documentation and specifically a learned approach to augmenting software documentation in modern software development life cycles. So software documentation processes in development, security, and operations, known as DevSecOps, software development life cycles, are inadequate, costly in time, and difficult to verify quantitatively. Bottom line, it's hard, and no one really wants to do it, nor effectively do it well. It's estimated that at least 10% of a DoD contractor's overall software developmental costs are sunk to software documentation overhead costs annually. And this result can go as high as 25% when considering cybersecurity and ATO requirements, if these numbers are even tracked at all. So the README proof of concept is a strategic step forward towards a content generative software documentation process in modern DoD DevSecOps software development life cycles. When looking at industry and the incorporation of documentation techniques in DevSecOps, one finds terminology associated with development documentation and operations. The primary differentiator between uh, the README proof of concept and DevDocOps is the uh, derivation of the content for software documentation directly from the underlying source code itself, which is backed by the cadence of the software development lifecycle via the DevSecOps policy. And so what we're interested in here is from that SDLC uh, construction technique of software creation, we need a way to translate that into natural language suitable for content that could then be used to generate software documentation. To do this, we need to leverage machine learning at scale. And specifically, we need to look at prior art in the domain of computer vision for image to image domain translation. And what we do is extend upon that a technique for machine learning and training and validation at scale using a modular pre-trained model reuse technique um, that we've coined the Matryoshka technique. And what this is here, this technique uh, is associated with Russian nesting dolls. The outer layer is our pre-trained modular approach um, for learning a shared embedding suitable for cross-domain translation uh, between a source code modality pre-trained model and a, um, a decoding in the natural language space, specifically in the software engineering lexicon. And so to sc scope this problem down to be effective within a year-long uh, uh, research initiative, uh, we did a couple of things. First thing we did was um, focus exclusively on Python programs backed by the Python dialect, and specifically further, the Python 3 decimal 8 uh, context-free grammar. Um, additionally, we wanted to create a data set from this, and so it's been shown over the past couple years that um, GitHub and the software source code repositories therein, um, many, many thousands of open source public available repositories, is a suitable domain for utilizing for machine learning inference approaches um, related to uh, uh, software engineering, and, and in this case here for documentation. So what we do is we take these thousands of um, software repositories and look at the co-occurrence within their Git transaction histories uh, between a current state of a particular uh, Python module and the co-occurrence of natural language, whether it's in inline source code comments, uh, the git commit itself, um, issues, pull requests, and comments associated with that particular transaction hash. Uh, we put that all together as in an unsupervised, underdetermined way uh, to form the, the basis for our data set for evaluation and for training and validation. Uh, further approaches here related to machine learning architectures, as well as domain curates in the software engineering lexicon, or we talked about further. Um, and additionally, we have also built a um, DevSecOps prototype implementation for consideration as an exemplar. So just to recap some of the interesting stuff here, which is the machine learning model approaches, um, we'll go into some notional architectures now that we'll utilize uh, further in this example. Um, the first one here is a recurrent-based approach we call a recurrent neural network. Uh, and here we utilize gated recurrent units in a way to sequentially encode and then have a latent representation and then decode back to that original source modality under a reconstruction. For all these here, the parameterized encoders will be blue, the latent representations will be red, and the decoding under parameterization processes will be in green. Um, the forward reconstruction process from input to output under loss will be these gray boxes. This is an example, a simple example at that, of a recurrent-based approach for sequencing of tokens. Uh, what are not shown here in these examples say are the bidirectionality of the context as well as the word attention mechanisms in the decoder. But this shows at least a sequential autoencoding process that we can utilize. Uh, contrast this with an autoencoder. In this case here, we're looking at an autoencoder for taking a higher dimensionality and compressing it down to a lower dimensionality embedding and then decompressing it back out. So this idea of compressing down and decompressing back out is important. What differentiates an autoencoder from a variational autoencoder is the idea of the reparameterization of the latent space. And so here we have a stochastic randomly sampled from a multivariate Gaussian distribution to give us a continuity within the, uh, the latent domain. And we further extend this with the idea of a conditioning. And so the idea here is we take um, uh, an association of the source and target domain and endow that uh, within the, uh, the parameterization input models for both the encoder and the, and the decoder uh, to give it a sense uh, within the loss functions, uh, a context for, for conditional switching. 
And so now we have the, uh, the, the construct necessary for our readme proof of concept. We have on the outside here pre-trained models from one modality, in this case the source code modality, and we have another pre-trained model uh, for the natural language uh, associated for content generation in software source code, uh, for software documentation. And what we need to do is um, apply the uh, Matryoshka technique between those in order to fastly and iteratively uh, T and V at scale uh, multiple engineering architecture techniques for machine learning. Um, between the two, and then under hyperparameterization. And so this allows for a lot of concurrent execution and rapid prototyping of, of various um, models, uh, architectures. And so some of the work that we did that ended up being highly viable, uh, originally when we looked at the source code um, encoding, uh, we turned to code to vec and code to sequence based approaches. Uh, those were depreciated in lieu of a, an approach out of Signity called uh, abstract syntax trees to vectorization. And so what this approach here really does is it utilizes the context-free grammar rule set as a basis in which to bottom up encode an abstract syntax tree from a source code snippet in the Git tra transaction log uh, to an intermediate encoding necessary for the uh, readme proof of concept encoding from source domain. Uh, source code domain. Uh, we contrast this with the idea of a sequential to sequential based um, autoencoding process um, uh, for the uh, for the language domain. And for this here, we looked at um, about a decade's worth of posts uh, backed by Stack Overflow uh, discussions are re relevant, highly contextually relevant to the uh, software engineering domain. Uh, furthermore, we utilized a pre-trained Gensum uh, word vectorization model. Um, in addition to um, taking that model out of 1.7 million parameterization and pruning it down to the top 100,000 uh, Pareto popular stack overflow token terms, uh, we now have a methodology in which to um, encode and decode um, discussions on stack overflow posts, uh, which give us now the second part of our, our process, which is the, uh, the decoding mechanism for um, a software engineering lexicon. Uh, language. And so an example of this particular process here, uh, we go and we take a, um, a uh, tokenization, lemmatization, summing approach uh, to the uh, conversations on the Stack Overflow posts, backed by this 100,000 Pareto popular vocabulary, and turn that into an ordinal space. And then it's part of the reconstruction process of sequence to sequence, bootstrapped by a pruning of the Gensum uh, word defect uh, and embeddings for the encoder and decoder. This allows us now to um, certainly start from a, a good state in which to reconstruct these original labels back, back by this vocabulary. And so now between these two, we have the encoder and the decoder, but what we really need to do is understand the prior art um, and, and have some sort of rational sanity uh, in, in our Matryoshka technique uh, in its implementation. And so to do that, we had to look at the image to image uh, domain transfer um, uh, between the two from prior art. And in this case here, we reproduced uh, prior art um, in the MNIST and fashion MNIST domains, which are the handwritten images and then also uh, representations of articles of clothing. Uh, these are supervised models, being that they have categorical labels associated with them. And so as part of the technique for our conditional variational autocoder approach, uh, we, we didn't have the classification loss term available to us as we're doing this in a very uh, underdetermined, unsupervised way. And so we replaced the classification loss with a, um, a similarity loss back by the cosine similarity distance. And, and here's an example of what the outputs of that do. Again, we're using this as testing and evaluation of our technique uh, in rapid prototyping in order to establish the ML engineering paradigm necessary for a reading proof of concept in the image domain. And so here we show reconstructions. Uh, in the, I think the best ones here were very strong codes using, using uh, convolutional kernels uh, for both the MNIST and the fashion uh, MNIST domains. And then trying a bunch of models in between those uh, for, for the nesting models. Uh, one of the approaches that worked really poorly uh, was a just a pure variation autoencoder between the two. Here we see a maximization of precision at the expense of accuracy. Um, and additionally, we uh, looked at um, classification loss versus our um, uh, similarity loss approach. And we see reconstruction with the CDAE models um, endowing with the source and target domain modalities. Um, but we also see a lot of cross-pollination between the two. And this is just something we're going to have to live with with our particular approach. And so now we have everything necessary in order to build up our uh, modest technique for deriving the um, readme proof of concept at scale. We have our data ops. We've collected something like 111,000 um, open source repositories from GitHub. ML ops, we uh, implemented the, uh, the technique on top of um, PyTorch's Lightning as an experimental framework. We have the pre-trained models from AST to vectorization and then also the sequence to sequence from Stack Overflow posts. And we have our CVAE uh, interchange model in between them we wanted to work on. And so we ran through about 150 models of these, and here's the most, one of the most performant of the two, of, the, of those bunch. Um, and we can see here is the natural tendency of all the different loss terms to, uh, to converge over time. Um, what we have here is a measure of what we call 70% uh, similarity based on a 70% threshold. And it's not the best measure ever, but it gives some sort of perspective onto how well the reconstruction process is actually occurring here in this, in this forward model. And so here's an example, just really quickly, of the minimal viable product of the implementation of the readme proof of concept in a containerized environment suitable for DevSecOps uh, inference, forward inference of a change set from a uh, Git transaction horse uh, uh, underlying code. So, yeah, here we show the forward process as RESTful-based request um, and how this works. 
Um, there is a white paper in preprint which goes into very much detail about the um, uh, the experimental technology here we used, um, and as well as our approaches, both that worked and did not work. Um, we show an exemplar of the proof of concept for the readme prototype, um, and also the validity of the Matryoshka technique as a mechanism for fast and iterative uh, training validation at scale. Um, additional future considerations would be um, including this as an actual GitHub action bot. That would be interesting. Uh, training on larger and, and more uh, representative uh, data sets from GitHub or other repositories. Um, additional modalities, different languages, um, different use cases. Um, software factories uh, in an engagement with key stakeholders to understand exactly how industry and research in the DoD can utilize this sort of proof of concept technology in their own uh, DevSecOps SDLC pipelinings. And, and finally, I'd like to leave with the team here. I uh, really had a, a good working team and made this entire project successful. Um, if there are any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out. Thank you, and have a nice day.